So, first, I have to apologize because when I looked at my handwritten notes, uh, when I realized that I had made some mistakes, so for those who uh, copied something, when there was a minus sign here, so it's just the large deviation function of the density. Yeah, there was a minus sign, and the formula was wrong. It has the same table, but So anyway, let me just remind you that I said in the previous lecture. So I think the system is contact with two reservoirs. I draw this geometry, but in fact, this, this geometry is not, not uh, you could imagine more complicated geometry, for example. You could imagine that here you have contact with one reservoir and all the rest of the system, the sides and so on, are in contact with a different reservoir with a different temperature, everything. So it's just a, a way to say. It. So, an idea that I'm in contact with two, two reservoirs, but it's not necessary that this geometry is this one. You could have uh, from several reservoirs. Okay, so the main two basic quantities that we had to consider is that if the system is at equilibrium, then there is a flux of particles from the system, but the average flux is zero, but still you have situations. And this run by some sigma of O divided by L. L is because uh, we have the, the fixed flow. And if O1 minus O2 is small, then the average current will be V of K. Over n times k one and k plus my order. And the, the, the thing is that knowing these two quantities, then essentially we can describe not only things close to equilibrium, but because all this is ever at equilibrium or very close, but you can describe situations where the two densities are, are really different. And uh, okay, so this is to us perfectly. The thing I mentioned the fluctuating hydrodynamics and the Hamilton Jacobi equation. I, I don't think I will use them too much today, but uh, okay, maybe you know, fluctuating hydrodynamics, I will uh, use, use it, but uh, I, I will remind you what it was. When it will be used. So now this is what we discussed in the previous lecture. Again, here there are some mistakes, but it read correctly. Uh, today, maybe tomorrow, I will come with an incorrect sense to the company. Uh, now, let me uh, tell how to compute, so I give you a model, how to compute uh, these two parameters for a given system. And in fact, see, you can say that because of the relation between sigma and uh, Sigma and T, you can know the free energy of the system. So sometimes the problem by itself, finding the free energy of the system by itself is a difficult task. But imagine that you have a system for which you know the free energy as a function of the density. It's a complicated function. But then the only thing you need is to compute D of them. You only need to compute one of them because sigma of the Okay, so it's a little bit easier to consider, but it is important is to consider each one of them. Uh, 
Particles try to jump at the rate one. And so if I concentrate on a certain bond here and I ask what is the average current to this bond, it will be Q, Q over Q on the little Q current on the same phase, okay? Because all the things I was talking about here is imagine they have started from. Anything and then I let the system reach it in this phase, so this will be just NR minus NI plus one because particles can jump and create NI to the left or NI to the, to the right. Okay, so this is the average current, but the current in the steady state does not uh, depend on uh, the side you look at. So and I just sum over all the bonds. Then I get the telescopic sum, so I get that L, I get L minus one, so there are L minus one bonds, times Q over Q, N1 minus NL. L minus one is the same current because the, the, the steady state current is the same everywhere. And so if I imagine that here the system is uh, at least in contact with the reservoir, then it is always rho one and rho two. Here I get rho one, which is, which is very close to rho one, minus rho two over n. And so, okay, this problem. It does satisfy a uh, fixed law and that means that the whole is just simply one. Okay. Uh, 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 the L is is one of the line. Okay, the, the current is. P of O divided by N and yes, so we have L on the left side. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. 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 And you, okay, I don't remember there was a question about how L has to be large. Well, here there is L minus one, and here so N1 and L are not exactly the density, so there are small corrections. But as soon as L is very large, then we give you P of O. And now you want to compute sigma four. Because okay, the way that f of four was defined was when L of n, I have n particles in the system of size L or volume V, but here it's one dimension. So you expect that this will be LF of L over L. 
the function and the partition function for a system. Uh, here there is no interaction, this is just uh, L N divided by N factorial. So this is the number of configuration of the system. And uh, okay, so, so and so now if we use this formula then I realize that the problem is where I realized that there was a need for a minus sign. Yeah, and the formula is not correct, but we said it's a one and what at the beginning, but this is the double sign equal minus D of O over sigma K, and this can be to the sigma of O is equal to two. So non interacting particle. Okay, so in fact, the, the whole technique that we can use in the macroscopic situation theory uh, applies to this non interacting case, but it's totally okay, it's useless because. You can treat the non interacting particles in many ways, but it's nice to have such an example because uh, you can check if you, if you can calculate everything you like by over me. And then, Non interacting particles is just a special case of the zero rank process, which is called the zero rank process. And for the zero rank process, okay, the particles somehow interact also. So you yeah, have MI. Particle on each side, but the probability that one particle will jump here instead of being an I is just a function I call it G of an I. There are a lot of discussions about uh, the zero rank process, but I am not going to discuss here. So it could jump at this rate on the left, on the right, at this, the same rate on the right, on both sides. And then you repeat exactly what I have said before. Q over G will be on the steady state G of an I minus G of an I plus one. Just looking at the given bond, and therefore you make the sum, and then you will get an L times the current. It's just of N1 minus C of N L. And then, uh, okay, and then as before, here you are going to say that this is the average that you would get if the system has, was at equilibrium. So here, if it was at equilibrium at density O1, and here, and at equilibrium with O1 minus G of N at equilibrium with Pro2. And because this will be function of O1 minus Pro2, and then again, you find that you have uh, you have fixed law. Okay, so there is nothing very uh, interesting with this. And in fact, there are lots of situations where the current can be written as a difference. It could be but if you can write it as a difference, so if the probability of jumping will be the neighborhood, 
and the magnetic current as a difference of the same quantity translated by one step. Then the telescopic sum, when you add the current everywhere with work, and this is, and then just knowing equilibrium property, you will get zero. And the zero will not be one, it could be something else. So this is called a drag line state. And there are places which are non gradient and where okay, I said that was very yesterday, and he reminded me that it's very difficult to compute the zero four when it's non gradient So, just to give you an example, the case of gradient will be the following. I show you two examples, one which, are, which look very close, one which is gradient, and one which is not. So imagine that you have an axis, you have n i particle on each side, and now there is k, which is the maximal number of particles you can have on the side. Okay, now there is two, two models that you can consider. One model where the jumping state would be n i times k minus n i plus one. So it means that the rate at which it jumps is that proportional to the number of particles here times the number of poles there. Okay, you do what I have done here, you will see that it is gradual. Now, same because the same system with at most k particles uh, on each side. And then now the rate at which you jump is ni, the number of particles on the third side, but the rate is zero, is zero with mj and i plus one equals k. So if there are already k particles, you cannot jump there. And this is an over model for the number of particles. There is a maximal occupation on the side, and this will not be gradient. And so this so one. Is this uh, okay, so the rate at which it jumps is just proportional to the number of particles. Okay, and then but, but right. when. Yes. Okay. So now, okay, so, so I have discussed here some models. Uh, independent particles, zero range process. Okay, it's nice. In fact, the interesting aspects will not show up in this model. And so there are other models which are not so much more difficult. To, okay, they are not more difficult to define, but they will show some more structure. And later on, I am going to discuss large deviation function and also correlation. And we will see that. Uh, independent particles or zero range process are very special in the sense that they won't have the generic properties of uh, the physics system. Okay, so let me talk about the set. That means symmetric, simple, simple, no, symmetric, simple, simple, simple. So it turns out that well, the model is simple to uh, define. And also, it's one of the few cases, I am not going to mention all of them, and the, 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 the number of cases you can solve is increasing, but it does not increase very quickly. So, uh, so it's one of the cases for which there are a lot of things which can be computed and which have some generic properties of non equilibrium system. So the model is defined in the following way. You have the lattice, and now each side of the lattice can be ever occupied or empty. So there is at most one particle per side. And then, okay, like that, then what happens is that on the right and on the left, then you inject particles with certain rate, 
you remove particle with uh, also a red, so the particle is there with the red gamma it escapes. If it is empty, then we set alpha it and it enters. And here you have beta and then okay, so you have parameters there. And the question is what is the steady state, for example? And in general, if you take arbitrary parameters here, then the system is out of equilibrium, you will have a flux of particles. Okay, so first let's see whether we can compute D, D of rho for this problem. And if I compute let me put n Okay, so n i, the equation, can take the value zero or one. And now I do what I have just done a minute ago. I sit here between side i and side i plus one, and I add what is the average flux, the current, and it will be okay. How is it possible that there is a jump between side i and side i plus one? It will be ni one minus ni plus one minus. Because for the jump to occur, we need the particle and we need the next side to be empty. And the same, if you want the current in your different direction. And again, here we are very lucky because it looks nonlinear, but the nonlinear terms disappear. And so it's ni minus ni plus one. Which is exactly the same as for non interacting particles, and therefore this is one. The same thing as before, but uh, we have the same expected response, and so V is one, the same as before. But the difference is F of rho. So, what is the partition function of a system like that, where each site is empty or each site is occupied? Then L of N. Is just n factorial over n factorial divided by n minus n factorial. And so this gives you an f of two. You can take n large, n large, and the density rho is minus rho log rho minus one minus rho log one minus rho. And again, you use not the formula which seems to be wrong, but the zero one, then we find that the sigma of rho, okay, we need to take the second derivative of that, is two rho one minus two. So, so you see the system is not very different from independent particles. So, independent particles, it was two rho, now it's two rho one minus two. And if the density is very small, you feel that the particles will not interact much. So if you go to the situation where the densities are very small, in fact, the independent particle is the right thing to do. Okay, so now we have the quantities. But the point is that for this problem, in fact, one can calculate not only the D and the sigma, but one can compute all the correlation. One can compute the profile, one can compute the correlation functions. And so I am, first I, I want to compute the profile and then I will tell you how to compute the, the, uh, the correlation functions. So, so let's look at what happens at the situation of the function of time. Okay, maybe I should throw the, so, uh, because I have the macroscopic time to be T and the, the like, microscopic time. Okay, so, okay, so how is the occupation of side I? Could, it could increase with time or it could decrease with time. So how can it increase ever there is a particle on the left side and the site was empty, so this is the contribution of the jump from I minus one to I, or there is a similar term that there is a jump from I plus one to I, 
Magnet. So minus N minus you can start with an arbitrary uh, configuration, and then if you have raised the other process, you will get that. And we are lucky here that the nonlinear term, in fact, becomes that. So, so in fact, at the end, you get two, uh, you get NI plus one plus NI minus one minus two NI. Uh, Okay, so this is what you get. And here we can see the state state, then the state is here. This is zero. So if I wait for very long, then we are already this do not change anymore. So the state state. And then what you see is that okay, so you see that direction, and the solution of that for is is uh, solution of this equation is it has to be linear, a linear function of the position. And in fact, to do the calculation, we have the, this alpha parameter and so this is what you get that n is equal to rho, which we call rho a, and plus I have to, in uh, order to write it uh, in. Not too many uh, complicated formula, we get this thing. There are okay, in terms of the parameters which are there is alpha to gamma of the delta over theta plus delta, a is one over alpha plus gamma, and b is one over theta plus delta. Okay, so, so this is elementary because okay, that is linear, you can see it from here, and then you have okay, don't write it just let me spend too much time on this. Is that at the boundary, the so uh, the, the equation is modified because of this rate. So you write this equation, and you know that it's linear from this, so you have in fact two coefficients to determine because the linear function is determined by two parameters. So you inject that in the boundary equation, so that you find the uh, uh, okay. So so okay. So in fact, if I go to large scale, if I go to large scale. Let's say that R is L X. And L is large. So at that scale, L is large, so the B I can draw with more of the rows, so all these things I can draw. And then I get that uh, the profile with L high is rho A one minus X plus rho B and X, where I is L. Okay, so, so it's a linear profile. That's not. Okay, it's easy to do, very easy to do. Now, it turns out for, that for this problem, in fact, one can calculate all the correlations. So, it's, the problem is integrable. There are different ways, for example, the, the matrix on that method that we have used. Okay, one can compute all the correlations. Now, if you want, uh, there are a number of papers to do, but if you don't, don't want to read this paper, so they can just Tell you one formula that you can check where you find all the correlation testing, or you can check that you can write the evolution and see whether this formula uh, works in the steady state. And this formula says imagine I want the correlation between time I1, I2, and I have a system of size L. Then, sorry. No, I'm sorry, yes, unfortunately, yes, two is the same. No, okay, because two is time. Okay, so it's the same. So it turns out that the formula is the following it, well, this equation, this is who, uh, when the system is fine, you don't think the system is large. So it's two 
I won two IP numbers. So the correlation, uh, so here there is a plotting. So I have a correlation with 57. Oh, no, oh, okay. So my new one is there. Okay. Of the system of size n, so it's the correlation with k plus one point is the same as the correlation of the same system with one less point, or plus rho a minus rho b times the correlation of two points. So a system of size n minus one. And here there is the factor of the regular IP. And um, I see plus one divided by I plus A plus B minus one. So this is the formula which tells you all the correlation. And because it's uh, okay, so that's one way to represent the, the matrix product on that. It doesn't matter precisely what it is, but I write that just to tell you. I can compute for a system of size n the correlation function, but if I have two points here, here I have one point function, the one point function we have seen. If you have three points, you reduce it to two point functions and so on, so you can calculate all correlations. I don't want to do that. We take the, okay, there are different ways that cost me. And uh, the point in order to tell you from large scale. If you look in large scale, so, so really the point is that in the steady state one knows all the correlations. And if you look on the large scale, if you look at the equation, which is the thing that we have just seen, rho is one minus x is to b. Yes. Now, if I look at the correlation function and we connect the, okay, the connected part, okay, so we get n and g. Minus minus okay, on that scale, you get something which is minus O A minus O B squared over L. The two point correlation and the thing that you can notice there are two things. First, when the system is at equilibrium, there is no correlation, no long range correlation. But the correlations, if the system is out of equilibrium, are order one over n. And so, in fact, uh, maybe I should say that this was computed at no cost. The first time it was computed by the phone, I think, in the point function. Really, it's not difficult because, you see, as I said, imagine you, you don't want to care about higher correlation functions, you want just two point correlation functions. Okay, so you write all the equations that you should satisfy you the number of cases, the two points are far, they are neighbors, they, they are close to the boundary. Okay, you write there are maybe six or seven different cases. But now I tell you that the correlation function is just a linear function of all the parameters. You put them as arbitrary ones as a function, and then you can
elle, peut nous considérer du fait qu'on ne veut pas quitter, toutes les corrélations, pour les gens qui sont en voie de That the sum of their old pairs of particles, so you have n squared term, and so it turns out that, the, for example, for the variance of the number of particles, then you can draw the correlation of the same order as the divisor, which is the answer as the divisor. So it means that you cannot ignore them, at least if you are interested. It's not perfect. So, no. As I say, for the symmetric exclusion process, we can compute two point functions. In fact, we can compute all the correlation functions. It turns out that if you take three point functions, there would be like all in minus all the u over n squared. And so, if I was interested in higher cumulants of the number of particles, so this three point function would also contribute. But that's very specific to the symmetric exclusion process. So the question you can ask is the same. So if I take the model the system, so if I the only thing I know about the system is We need to remind you what I told you last time about situations like the dynamics. So, we want to look at the evolution of the density. You have this conservative law. And then, what I said last time, and okay, so I think. We can prove it for some specific models, but I, I don't. Oh, okay, I have some notes about it, but I, I won't show them here. It takes time. Then, uh, uh, you see that J of X and C is given by minus G of C O prime, zero over GX, plus some right noise, avec, with eta, eta, the average of the right noise, and the delta of X minus X prime. Then that's the and then there is the sigma of this frequency. And in fact, there is one other right. So some people, I don't know if they have never heard about it, don't worry, but some people might uh, say that there is a mitigative noise and you have to do you have to decide what you do with it. But in fact, because of this one over right, it does not matter. It is a large uh, there would be no difference uh, due to the multiplication. So, anyway. okay. So now, what is the idea? What is the origin of this long range correlation? So you see, there is some noise in the current, and now I am at time zero, and I want to know. I am at time zero. What I say, I don't even need to be specific. And I say, you see, there is some correlation between the density or any function of the density at x and y. And how can it be? Okay, okay. Like, like this, if you I go back in the past, sometimes t prime less than c, there was a fluctuation of there was some eta. In fact, just a fluctuation somewhere at position z, there was a fluctuation of the current and this situation of the current has some influence on the density here and also an influence on the density there. So the correlation function is just due to this effect. The two have felt the same noise, okay, have some memory of the noise which occurred somewhere else 
at the, at the New York Times. Now, if you want to, so if you want to uh, hide some commonality, then you say, okay, they have this uh, evolution of the density. And let's say that I am in the steady state, the rho of S and T is the average profile plus some small perturbation. And this small perturbation is due to the noise which occurs everywhere in the past. And then we get that we are from the C. Okay, so you say R is more, you enter into the equation, and then you get the square G of Obama times R of X and T. Uh, okay, sorry, minus here yeah. equals minus G over G T of theta of X and T. Okay, so this, this is just you, you, you take the uh, equation and you say that the density is close to the steady state density, which doesn't depend on time, and you write it. Okay, so okay, for people, uh, mathematicians like uh, Kerry, this is a uh, caring because this is white noise, it takes derivative of white noise and so on. But my, my advice is that you, you forget that, you just say, theta, <laughs> no, no. Okay, you, you say eta is some function of x and t that is the atmos that you like, so you can take this derivative, and then you do all your calculation, and at the very end of the calculation, you remember that eta was the white noise. So, okay, so in practice, the, but once you you the Why do you I'm on no, because, because I am on my yes. yeah. yeah. T and X and all the relativistic. No. Sorry, I just, and it's E of rho plus R. T of rho, 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 rho hat of R. So, okay, so it's all the time. Is it the first derivative? No, no, D is the function D of rho, which is very high. And how? Yes. So, yeah. I am linearizing, and somehow, you see, if you look at rho, rho, and there is no noise, it is the solution of t over dx, t over rho, and t over dx of uh, Okay. And in fact, when you linearize the d and Okay, you enter the okay, so okay. now because so this is a this is a linear problem, and essentially this the DR this is linear and then this is an external term, so you can solve it by introducing uh uh, Green's function. Okay, so, so, so I, I say if you okay, so, so I define the Green's function solution of this equation. Okay, so if you define the, the Green's function. It is the solution of G of X and Y uh, and T with this over G of rho bar of X. So rho bar is not a constant, it's why you then something is not a thing to, to calculate. Okay, so we introduce the same function. Okay, in fact, this satisfy also another equation like this one. But the square of the of the square 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 of the square
to take uh, the delta theta for the show. And using this ring function, then you can write the solution of that. I have a density, a small kind of density due to, to the noise. I am just following it. I call it R, and then R is integral to minus infinity. This is prime integral 0, 1, to z of t of x, z, and t minus two prime uh, of minus t theta over z uh, of z. Okay. So this is the solution because it's a linear problem. I write it in terms of the green function. Here I have a derivative of what would be the, the white noise, but it's not too pleasant. But the way it is written, in fact, the way we did it, you can see that it's just uh, you make an integration by part. So already you don't have the derivative of the white noise, and that's it. And let me just come to so, so you get R in terms linear function of eta, you have a similar equation for R at point Y. And then let me just give you what you get at the end. And at the end, you get that the correlation of the density. Equals, okay, minus the average current times integral from zero to one. The over the z of sigma prime of four z of z so there is the times integral from zero to infinity dx dx z and z of so, okay, whatever the formula is, uh, the, the spirit is really the picture I have drawn there. So, you see, we have some noise here, and this noise has an effect on, on, the, on the position. And when you do the computation, you get this formula. And so, whatever, hopefully, probably uh, there is ever a time or something wrong because I make so many mistakes. But anyway, you know, this is what it is. But the important thing is the following. First, here you have the cone. So if the system is at equilibrium, there is no correlation. And I told you there is a interacting particles, non-interacting particles, zero range process. And for the zero range process, D is equal to sigma prime something like my prime, so this is the constant that you get. So unless you have very special situation, equilibrium or some special model, then usually you have some great correlation. And, and, and this is the true current, so there is one over L. So this is uh, okay, that, that's, that's proportional to one over L here. Uh, so this is uh, the theory for two point correlations. And uh, okay, so, so you hopefully you can do the, the same for three point, four point, and so on. And of course, the algebra will be complicated, but you know, we have a fully integrated theory with this interactive also. So we can go further. So, okay, so the last one okay, comes out from integration by part. So, in fact, what you have is that G, okay, well, that G is equal to uh, D of pro prime bar. This is what is D of pro bar sorry, times pro prime. So when we, last time, I don't know what you are. Last time I was, I, I showed that. So a priori, there is no, there is no J anywhere, but when you do this integration by part, at some stage, you have this quantity up here, and then you can simplify and, and get the G. But, but if you want, uh, 
si le but est quel, la même chose, on peut se dire non, en fait. I don't see why there is, except I did the calculation, but why there is no correlation at equilibrium when you see it from this point of view. When you see it from different point of view, there is no long range, very long range correlation. But, but at equilibrium, this noise, which is versus, uh, which has some impact on X and Y, Y disappears. Okay, I'll do the calculation again. Yeah. Yeah. But in the, in the yeah. If you think about what the energy behind it, the free energy is going to be there. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Okay, from that point of view. So that's why there's no problem. Yeah, no, no. From the free energy, you see it immediately. But when you do the calculation, it's really because at equilibrium, still you have some fluctuation for the current. Why you disappear? Uh, yeah, yes, no, I agree. Yes. Um, the question of all the ZRP run even if there's a current or the zero range process of the current. This quantity is a quantity. It does not depend on, on the robot. Even the few that we have. In fact, there is a product measure and the rest of the paper. You can do much more, but, but essentially, Okay, the formulas are, are different, but essentially, it's not much what you have for non interactive right. traffic. Again, product Yes, the product measure, but it might have some structure, but I don't want to defend that here. Okay. So, okay, so what happens? But I think what happens is that, okay, so we are now on the, the end of the talk. I, I will talk about the large deviation transform. So, so I remind you what you have your system, you have one dimension, but you have the contact with two the girl who are here, and in the first lecture we saw that there is really an average profile. And then you see a okay, very interesting in, in a profile which is very different. Okay, very different could be very close also if I am interested in the situation. So, a different profile which is not the same, maybe close, maybe far. And the point is that I am in the speed of space. And also, the system size is very large. That's very interesting. Otherwise, everything will depend anymore on the same size. And then the point is that what is the probability that you observe the quantum density profile in the same steady state? And this is the exponential minus a function of of all of them. And the right thing, and I'll try to like that, that is that this, uh, in this uh, in, uh, equilibrium is just the same as and the same as it's interesting in the sense that if you have a profile density at equilibrium, then you can extract work from it. For example, the well known case that maybe the just the density profile is just. High density here and, and uh, low density there, and then somehow you can put a need or something and then get work out of it. So, so if the profile is complicated, more complicated, you have to, to be very clever where you put the means and so on, but you can extract uh, work from it. So it's why it's free energy, and it's why we have in mind that this quantity would extend the energy. Of course, this is the of the program, because you 
We have expressions of that. And in fact, listen, maybe I, I write it, but I'm not going to derive it, but remembering gives you the idea of how it was derived. And it was derived by two methods, which are rather different. So, so, so. So the formula, and in fact, this was done. Now there are a few of our models which can be solved also, but this was done in you know, the 2009 process. And the type of okay, is equal to what? Over a certain point in the type of thing of the wall, you have to go. One minus two log one minus two, so there is the best you can do, yeah, plus log of f times divided by rho t minus two. Okay, it's going to satisfy that over the optimum of our function f, which is equal to one, f of one equal to two, and f. Is the decreasing monotone function. Okay, so this was the formula, and in fact, it was obtained by two different methods. Which, so when you by okay, by, by some work of this is doing the both this gene sphere and sphere, uh, and there is the other way, and I'm going to say the one input by the group in Rome, in fact, Bertini. Victory and the uh, Gabriel and the Manitino and London. In fact, in Brazil. Okay. So, both we agree on that, but we use very different methods. Okay, so let me say what method we used and what method they, they used. And, and uh, so, what method we used essentially, okay. Uh, calculation which is a little nasty, but essentially we use the knowledge of all the correlation functions. Earlier I told you we have all the correlation functions, we can so we manipulate them, and so if we know all the correlation functions, you we can compute this quantity for a finite system. So alpha i or like the right, I take the generating function, so you can get this. And when p times time large, if I take the alpha i to be very slowly to the p time time, the rotation is small, this will become the function L of of g of alpha. And so because we have all the correlation functions, we can okay, we do the calculation, we can get this quantity. Depends how it depends on this function. And then this function is alpha of x is not in black. We will not transform of alpha of x of x. Of the large deviation function. I look at what all the so, so the Laplace transform of uh of the large deviation function, so if we know it, we now the thing you know in advance uh, that this function yeah, is non local, is not a non local function of alpha of x. And why is it non local? Because there is this long range correlation. So, I mean, when you find for um, J, what is the source of J? Then they don't just start with the one. You just two by three. Oh, no, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.
uh, I let you uh, uh, do it. It's, it's not difficult to see for example that if the activity will take three or four more minutes, minutes to she of alpha times. Imagine that the alpha is small, it starts like zero, one, alpha of the so alpha is very small. Plus the next term is integral to x dy x y of alpha of x, alpha of y, and here there is called the rho of x, rho of y. And then there is an L here because you remember what this thing depends from L, and then if you compute uh, two order Q, then there will be the three point correlation. And so, so, so this is very classical thing. Uh, the way that this uh, generating function is related to the correlation function. But you see that this is a non local function of X and Y because it is not dependent on the X at a single point, it's, it's a non local function. So the outcome of it is that. The rule of event is non local and it's non local because this correlation is zero and it is non local because the system is out of equilibrium. Okay, now, okay, so, so, so you can find a lot of time in any kind of presentation with that. I just want to go down on the screen. Mention what the idea of the uh, okay, it seems by a physicist like me because there are no mathematicians of the home of uh, Bertini as collaborator. Okay, I want to know the probability, it's very much related to the I mean, back of the equation like before. I want to see this profile. Okay, the system, if I go very far in the past, what is the same case? So I have to find how the system gets deformed in order to produce the data. That's the idea. And the say that F will be the minimum uh, over R and J, all to the direction that I wrote last time, so integral to F. Integral to minus infinity. Where divided by two infinity of R of X, yes, because it's new of R. So, okay, so this is the actual, and uh, they want to find the optimal path. So, that when I say the optimal path, so that I want to deform the rule function in order to it. This will be dominated by a certain point. We want to find what is the best path which takes that R at times T is rho of x and R at times minus infinity was rho of x. How to take what? Okay, so uh, okay, so this is uh, uh, what we have done, and it turns out that the fact, okay, in fact, it turns out that because we had this this formula that I wrote before for, for the large deviation function, we just could tell what is the full path, and so reason why we could do it. Some calculation I did last time, which shows the end of what I think, is that the optimal path, we saw last time that there was this Hamilton Jacobi equation, being what happens between time t and time t plus dt. And when we derive it, we found what is the current that you have to involve in order to go from time t to, to time uh, t plus dt. And we found that minus t, the current. Which allows you to go to here to here to describe this equation, sigma of r, t over dx, delta of x, delta of x. So if you give them the x, then they can say what the current is, and then they can take the 
And one very important, very last, a very important aspect that you have to do is that to say, I think what happens with the profile space. So I have Rodar, which is the steady state profile, and I would like when the system goes to uh, unlike the profile and system. Okay, so I will know how it relaxes. So to relax, I just Write the equation zero over the two equals minus zero over x. Okay, minus equals zero over the x. Zero over times zero over the x. So how it relaxes, I know, but this tells me how the fluctuation was produced. Okay, but x is non-local, so the current and therefore the evolution is non-local. So the the, the Along this trajectory, the density needs to know what happens elsewhere. So this means that the way the system relaxes is different from the way the, the, the fluctuation was created. And at equilibrium, you would expect the two things. You have the fact that the two things are the same. So that's characteristic to non-equilibrium system that the way the fluctuation is produced is different to the way it relaxes. And here it's not local. Okay, so it's not. Okay. Is there any critical comment? Is there any critical point to the test? Okay. So at the moment, uh, There are some very recent work, not for this problem, but for its coding, which is called the KMT. So, so the KMT, they have been able uh, to, to give an interpretation. And they, they, they say that uh, it would be very nice to do it here. And, and the, 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 the main thing which bothers them, because what in the KMT, you have a formula. Except that it's a mean. Yeah. Other than that. When it's a mean, you can think that it's a contraction of some, some larger uh, certain system with extra value because you look at the most likely thing. Here, it looks like it's a least likely thing. It's a problem. But when, when it, okay, so they said that. But then I remember that in the paper uh, 20 years ago, we or oh, a slightly different column, we said, oh, you can write it as a mean, or you can write it as a max. There were two formulations with okay. different expressions. So maybe looking back at this problem, maybe one can give it an interpretation, but this is completely yeah. But I'm sorry, but you had to do minus L times the minus L. Yes. So, so, so when you take the max, yeah. you look that you look at the least probable thing. But turns out that the formula is the same. And you say, we obtained it by some computation, but they are mathematicians. So, and in fact, in the world, we show you the very different context of the state sample and the game and the same. So, be careful. But here, we all agree with it. The max over f. But no, but you could say that the problem. Okay, I have not prepared to explain what happens in the over in the over system. But in in you see in probably with words in the over system they not talk about density. They talk about temperature, and somehow the thing which plays the role of f as if you had heat bars with uh, fluctuating temperature. So the system locally is at equilibrium with heat baths with fluctuating temperatures, and they have the probability both of the temperature profile and of the energy profile. Okay, so they, they have two variables, and then because it's a mean, it appears the, the right way. So you are the probability weight goes like exponential um, L sigma. 
Do I get the normalization factor in the board to get the to get the normal factor? Is it pre factor? Yes, I get so 